Hello, hello from the farm. Do I sound ridiculous if I say it kind of feels like we're living in paradise? But that's the way it feels. <laughs> Stay tuned. I'll tell you all about it. been on the farm almost two weeks now and we love it hello <laughs> there's Michelle yeah. <laughs> even he is happy here he's a little less grumpy than he is. <laughs> a little less grumpy right now he is outside well, he's in and out back and forth but he's been outside and is going back outside with the harvesters who are harvesting the mandarinas from our trees we have probably close to 20 trees maybe a few more i'm bad with numbers okay we got a bunch of mandarina trees or tangerines all over the property and a group of harvesters from san jose have come and they come with their workers and they harvest all of these mandarinas and michelle is out with them having a blast having a blast you know this is what it, when you own a farm and you have people come in and harvest your fruit and it's just really cool it's cool we just love everything about this place the water is fantastic the weather is fantastic the view is fantastic right directly in front of me which is behind the camera but i'll show it is the miravallis volcano the the cone <laughs> the peak of it is just right there and i'm looking at it through the windshield love it we love Bihagua it's really our favorite little town of anywhere that we've been it's arranged in a straight line mostly it's a strip maybe a mile two kilometers maybe not even that far but within that two kilometers is every single thing that we use on any kind of regular basis we can park the bus in one spot and there's plenty of parking there's parking all up and down on the side of that road there's a spot near the supermarket that we can back into and michelle can go he can go to the atm he can go all the way to the other end of town to the hardware store on foot and then if we don't want to go on foot if we've got a lot of things that we're buying it's easy to drive the bus down there we've got as we come into town we have the mega super and the mega super is surprisingly a very new and modern store it's very well stocked it's bright inside it's very clean they have everything that we use routinely just boop right there there's also a fresh produce market there's the colono which is kind of like lowe's it it's hardware home repair they sell some gardening stuff you buy your gravel from colono so there is that there's a big roomy diesel station up the road just just a little way out of town that i can easily pull the bus into and we can you know tank up with fuel we've met the veterinarian he was very helpful we needed an antibiotic for one of our for, for princess she had some bot fly issues because i don't want to traumatize all of you we won't show pictures it was bad bot flies don't usually cause infection but she had so many that she was starting to get infected we've we've taken care of it at first i didn't think we were going to be able to find antibiotic once i actually spoke to the veterinarian and went into his little store he's great he's right behind our pharmacy <laughs> so we have the veterinary and the pharmacy everything just right there in one spot so i don't think i can go any further with this video until i stop and introduce you to leo 
Leo came from Charlie's Angels Dog Rescue right here in Costa Rica. The story is that he had been abandoned on a coffee plantation and was just kind of running around and they took him in. He had a couple of adopters. He didn't work out in that home, but it's because the universe was saving him for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's a hugger, he's a lover, he cuddles, he's just very sweet. He's been very comforting for me in the aftermath of losing Paige. He's very affectionate. He's even more affectionate than Paige was. Paige, Paige could be a little cold. She could be a little standoffish. Now I'm picking apart my heart dog. No, they just have different personalities. I didn't need the affection. I didn't need the cuddles when I had Paige. Different time of my life. After she passed away, I needed the cuddles. And here came Leo. And he is so good at it. And he's so sweet. And I love him to pieces. Are you a good boy? Look at that face. Oh my gosh. I can't take it. He's so cute. You good boy. You good boy. You so sweet. You good boy. But he's not the only addition. <laughs> Just before we left the La Fortuna area, our friend Mo found a stray. Somebody probably dumped her out because she had mange. Most likely sarcoptic. We didn't get a skin scrape. We just saw it and knew that she had to have neck scarred or something. So. Mo helped us with her. She got her some next guard. We cleared that right up. And the little dog, we wanted to call her Libra. Libra Leo. <laughs> Lolly's talking to Michelle. Oh, no. We wanted to call her Libra. But that caused problems when we were trying to call one or the other of them because we have a Leo and a Libra, and you just go out and call Lee, and, you know, they both come running so we had to change her name to Raven which reminds me of a little story that I used to tell when I lived in Appalachia which is well known for the prescription drug problems the coal miners cocaine hillbilly heroin you know that that sort of thing it's not a secret that the area struggles with it I had in rescue at one point in time two dogs named Roxy and a dog named Foxy and I would often say that if I just went out on my front porch and called Oxy, I'd have three dogs and ten neighbors come running. I never tested the theory, but you know, it could have happened. One aspect of living so remotely, way out here on this gravel road, on its San Cristobal, Caratera, I don't really even know the proper name of the road we live on because this is Costa Rica and there are no addresses but it's San Cristobal <laughs> but anyway it's it's a it's a gravel road the entire way when you leave the town limits of Bejagua you're on gravel until you get to our farm and beyond it the character of the drive itself <laughs> it's something that I was concerned about at first because we have this 14 meter street bus, city bus. It's low clearance. We've knocked the exhaust off a couple of times already, <laughs> you know. But the road is very well maintained, even though you can be driving along and you come to certain areas of it where the jungle starts closing in, like on either side. The, the road looks like it gets narrower and narrower and maybe a little rutted and there's no sign of power poles or electrical service on either side and there's no sign of human habitation and it feels very isolated and maybe even a little spooky for about two seconds and then you round a curve and you're in the middle of a community of a settlement that has schools and churches and stores and signage and very well manicured homes and you see people and they're out gardening and they wave at you when you come by in the big yellow bus. Hi! And then you go around another curve and you're back driving off the end of the earth again. So it has character. It has the, the drive itself has a personality that 
surprisingly, I actually enjoy. I don't mind going into town. I don't dread it. The worst part, the absolute worst part about driving off this mountain in this big bus into town is literally hooking the water up when we get back. I bought a pigtail to connect. Oh, <laughs> fight behind me. To make it a little easier. So maybe, but it's very difficult where we park the bus to get all hooked back up. And that's the worst part. Everything else has worked out great. So we're settling in pretty well here on the farm. We've decided to just f live on the bus for the foreseeable future because the farmhouse, it needs to be deconstructed down to the bones really. And I think it would be best because of the rainy weather and because it gets so musty in the house to just open it up and have a more open Tico type house that's not shut in and closed in and that's going to take knocking out some walls. and things like that. So we've, we've got some work to do ahead of us on that. We've just been staying in the bus. The bus has its own issues. There are times when we think about the electrician who was hired to do the work on this bus and I feel positively homicidal. He connected something backward in the circuit breaker box so that the bus had the electric current run through it. We still have not tracked that down inside inside the circuit breaker box. We know it's in the circuit breaker box and not in the other parts of the bus. We had that, we had an electrician test it and confirm it. So what we did when we moved in was we just reversed an outlet in the house. We just switched the, 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 the wires and that one particular outlet, nothing else can be plugged into it, only the bus. And now there's no current running through the bus because everything is reversed but proper but what has happened because this knucklehead did this to the bus every appliance that we had that was straight wired into the bus it doesn't seem to have affected anything that came through the outlets but every appliance that we had straight into the wiring harness of the bus burned out it started with the inverter we burned up an inverter the first time the bus was connected inverter like a $300 inverter just gone it burned up the extra battery packs that we have that we were going to put solar on and we were we were not happy when it happened but we didn't really understand that it was a, a huge problem like it is since that time we've burned out the um, hot water heater which is gas it was a gas hot water heater but it it had an electric connection for the spark instant on it burned it out completely it also burned out the water pump this was the most recent thing we had to do some replumbing in the bus the pump itself had started to leak but it hasn't worked in months it's burned out it was it was connected straight wired into a refer Homicidal, I say. Sometimes I just get homicidal when I think about this guy and everything that happened. Look, this is supposed to be a professional. Look at the plug he had installed underneath the bus. We just needed a regular outlet, just a regular. I can't convey, words don't convey the level of frustration <laughs> that I felt about all of this. We've gotten most of the mess in the bus sort That's the harvesters. They're talking just outside the bus. I think they're getting ready to, to go. This is the second time they've been here. They came a few days ago with many workers and harvested all the fields around us with on the back of a mule. I mean, it was a pretty big production. 
it was something we enjoyed. We enjoyed watching them. Very nice people. We're going to have them back next year to harvest <laughs> our place too. Today we have a very special guest. Oh wait! That's Michelle. He's the owner of this farm. Yeah. It doesn't seem, huh? seem <laughs> such a, I don't come uh, to uh, in front of the camera often. Huh? But he is still here. He is right. still the owner of the farm. And he has something to tell me about the, the harvesters. What? Well, uh, well, I was getting curious about uh, uh, what will be the deal with uh, all those uh, baskets of uh, mandarins. So, uh, told me that... Um, yeah, I will not give name, but the, the previous owner said that he, he had sold the, the farm, okay? But that we could stack the harvest because we we already paid for it. I mean, he, he got already paid for it. Take us. <laughs> so all those uh, all those basket of uh, orange, uh, I don't get uh, anything out of it. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I I bring the. Where are they? Yeah, yeah. Because I think the cats knocked them off. Let me, let me. Okay, in the last video, you saw where the previous owner took the kitchen sink out of the house and broke the plumbing and took all of the faucets and, and who does that Why? okay right. yeah. and what now is... now we found out that he sold our fruit before, that's right lolly before and before to he told them that they had sold the farm and that we now own the farm but he sold our fruit and they pay him the money. Okay, well, it's it's okay. weird. At least, weird. At least I got Mushi what? Mushki. Yes, <laughs> that was from Morocco, by the way. That was something in the park. Can you see? Can you? Oh, whoa! At least we got a bag full of yummy tangerines. You better get this because I'm fisting to eat one. I'm fisting. I'm fisting to eat it. I'm, to, I'm throwing man, man, mandarin, mandarin tangerines. Hola. Oh, yeah. Hola. Oh, don't forget Lolly. Yeah, don't forget Lolly. Lolly is, um, she's a little concerned because the harvesters are leaving now and she was evidently enjoying them a little. Do you want, do you want, do you want a piece of mandarin, Lolly? I'm struggling to get this thing open. There we go. Hey, 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 Miss Bird, where you, don't give up. Where you going? Where you going? Where you going? Where, you, where are you going? Look, let go. Do you want a piece of the thing? I don't think she's interested in the fruit. She was just interested in the goings on. For future reference, the peeling does not taste good. Anyway, Michelle and I will see you next time. We'll have some new videos, some new stuff to tell you about, new stuff to show you. Have a great week. See you next time. See you. So, we've been here. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> that is the largest flock of green Amazon yellow night parrots that I have ever seen. There's probably 50, maybe 75 birds in that flock, maybe 100, I don't know. I, I, it's kind of hard to count them when they're flying around. Huge flock. And Lolly is aware of them. She's very aware of them. In fact, up until just a few minutes ago, I had her sitting here on the window because from there on the window, she can get to a tree and she could go be with those parrots anytime she wanted. She could take off and live with that flock. She is not interested. She's just not interested at all in those other parrots. So we'll see. Today she has a little bit of a burr under her saddle anyway because about an hour ago there was a gray hawk that landed on a tree stump just I don't know maybe 20 meters 
and she didn't like that at all and she made it perfectly clear that she is not a fan of hawks and that they are not welcome on her farm and she came inside and doesn't want to sit in the window any anymore so i'm going to let her sit there now because the other parrots are out there if the other parrots are out there that means there's no hawk around it's it's safe but they're making a lot of noise a couple of trees over and we're just gonna let her chill out there and hang out and talk to them if she so desires Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of our journey here in Costa Rica, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when we upload new content. By all means, talk to us in the comments. We love hearing from you.